So while he's setting that up, um, I was uh, a last minute addition to your uh, speaker list. Uh, and I think uh, Neil Davies asked me to do that because I represent something a little bit different. I represent things different probably at three levels. Uh, one, um, we're a very urbanized area. Uh, most of these stations we've been seeing are away from urbanized areas. Um, two, uh, we do an awful lot of monitoring, but it's much more regional in nature. Uh, our, our monitoring focuses over a, a very, like a 200 mile region where we're supposed to be gathering things for that whole area. And third, most of the collaboration you've been talking about today is where you all recreate consistency uh, of types of measurements and types of data systems at each place. I will tell you that we do a lot of work uh, in the genomic area, but I don't own a sequencer. And the partnerships that we're looking for are ones that play to our strengths. What I'm going to do is illustrate the kind of strengths that we have and ways that I think you may be wanting to partner with us in that capacity. Um, so, do I have a clicker? Okay, right there. Um, so, starting off with the site description, uh, we're located in Southern California, an area that has uh, 20 million people um, within about a 100 mile radius of our, of our lab. Um, we have 47 full-time staff, I think 22 have PhDs, almost all biologists and chemists. Uh, we have a lab facility of 14,000 square feet. So getting those details out of the way, let me give you the big picture of what we are. We are a research organization that was started by 14 government um, agencies that have water quality management responsibilities. So they each didn't have to do their own water quality research. They started us to be the research arm for all the water quality management agencies in, in Southern California. And I think what that does is that provides us a tremendous opportunity. Um, we, our job is to take science and transition it into application. And the beauty is we have all of the players already at the table. And in fact, my governing board is the directors of the 14 agencies. So it is, it's actually pretty impressive sometimes. We'll just show them some technology uh, and they'll go, oh wow, why don't we just start doing that? The kind of things that become very difficult. We've got the forum for making that communication. Uh, we have three major areas of, of molecular research. Uh, the first is transitioning beach water quality from culture-based methods uh, to uh, qPCR. Uh, the, the issue right now is that uh, uh, I know there are a lot of people out here who do bacterial work from a bacterial diversity perspective, but the way that beaches are monitored for water quality is a fecal indicator bacteria, and it's the quantity of that fecal indicator bacteria, and that's typically done right now by culture-based methods, and they take two or three days. And so you're telling people, you really shouldn't have been swimming here two days ago, you're gonna die. Um, <laughs> by doing PCR, uh, qPCR, we can, we can knock that down to about two hours. So we can take a sample in the morning and have a sign up on the beach by noon. And we're fairly far along with transitioning that. And a lot of the work we're doing right now is actually trying to automate that so we can actually put out uh, sampling stations um, on peers that sample continuously and telemeter the data back to the web so the health departments uh, can make warnings that day. Uh, the second thing we're trying to do, which is much closer, I think, to the things that you're doing, is a lot of the monitoring programs that we do and our member agencies do are focused on macrobiological assessments. Uh, and very often it's, it's uh, macroinvertebrates. What's the condition of the macroinvertebrate community? Are they healthy? Um, if they are, um, uh, then that's what we manage on. We're trying to get them to go off of morphology and onto uh, genetics. Um, and the third one is, is gene microarrays, trying to look at the health of the organisms themselves. When we see a biological problem, uh, then what we do is uh, we can go in and take a look at what are the things that are causing that problem. Our access to biodiversity is extensive. Um, uh, we have uh, over 400 sites. In fact, I'll show you a map. Uh, this is an area that stretches about 200 miles. Uh, and the red sites are in the ocean. They go out to about 10 miles offshore. Uh, and then, of course, you see about 400 uh, freshwater sites as well. Uh, we also have a tremendous network of taxonomists that we work with that allows us to validate all of our voucher specimens. Uh, and those, those groups uh, are ones that typically have about 50 to 100 taxonomists throughout the region, all getting together. And we love it. We bring the samples in. They all set up microscopes and compare. So when we're setting up these voucher specimens that we're doing, uh, the, the barcoding on. Uh, we've got very certain, uh, great certainty. Um, and, uh, and hopefully that's the kind of thing that makes us a potential partner because it's the field strength, it's the taxonomy strength. We don't have the sequencer, so we have to uh, work with others in order to get that. Uh, genetic data sets that we have, last slide. Um, we have a lot of benthic invertebrate collections. Um, uh, and if you take a look at bold, you'll see that about 75% of the macroinvertebrates 
on the coast of California um, come from our system, uh, data that we've collected. Uh, same thing for the freshwater invertebrates in that area too. Uh, and we're looking to add to that. Uh, for those of you who are also interested, uh, we also have uh, frozen filters. We do a lot of epidemiology studies on beaches. As we're doing the transition to uh, molecular technologies, we have to show that the health relationship from the molecular, you know, the qPCR measurements, are as good as the health relationships back to the culture-based. Uh, so when we do that, we actually take a whole bunch of extra uh, samples because when we're going out and, and sampling all these people to see whether they're getting ill, it doesn't hurt to take a bunch of extra samples. We've got all these frozen filters sitting there to allow us to go back and look at viruses or a variety of other community measures to see how that relates back to health. And that's my story.